If things keep going the way they are, the one place that you won't be playing Fab is in the flesh and blood. Hi friends, welcome back to Nearly Sane Games. I'm Neil, and today we're going to talk about the supply chain and why that's causing stress and problems for the local gaming store and why that's going to push Flesh and Blood to be an online only kind of game, uh, at least here in the US. I started playing this game in January of 2021. I bought my first box of Welcome to Wraith Unlimited and really uh, tried some sample games and fell in love with the product. And I quickly was dropping Magic, which was my current obsession, and moving everything over into Flesh and Blood. As a matter of fact, it got even more than that because when Magic would drop a new set, I'd buy a box of that, and special sets would come out, I'd buy a box of that. And here comes Flesh and Blood, and we drop a set, and I'm buying cases and cases of it. And I'm flying out to Vegas and different, traveling to different places just so I can play Flesh and Blood. Um, the difficulty is that my local stores haven't really embraced Flesh and Blood. Uh, I have three uh, stores in my area. Two of them will carry Flesh and Blood products, but don't have Flesh and Blood uh, events. And they can't really run them because they don't have enough product and they can't get the product that they need to really offer that in their store. It's not like you're going to say, hey, come on down to the shop and let's play some flesh and blood. And let me teach you about this whole new game. And isn't it great? Don't you love it? And yeah, I really love it. Uh, okay, um, go online and buy from a store online to get the product because we don't have it here. So why are you running events for it if you don't have the product? There's no reason to. And so if stores can't get product, where's all the product going? Well, it's going online to online retailers. Uh, one of the biggest retailers is Channel Fireball or Card Shop Live. And when you buy product from them, you're buying for costs that are less than the price that the, the stores are paying to get the product. And that makes it a really hard sell to buy from my local game shop. Uh, now, when Everfest came out, I was able to buy a few boxes. I did buy them. I did buy a few boxes from my local game stores, and they were $100 each. Uh, this is a little bit tough to swallow because uh, I could easily get them for, you know, $80. But I'm ready to support my local game store. But when we get into the realm of closer to half off, I can't, I, I can't support my local game store. Like I, if I want the cards and you're going to say a box of cards costs a hundred dollars and I can go online and get $200 worth of cards for that same price, I'm going to go do that. I'll spend a little bit extra to support my local game store, but as, as prices get lower and lower online, it's harder to do that. Uh, Card Shop Live was recently doing a sale of all of the unlimited sets, not even all the unlimited sets. They had six boxes in one crate for $319.99, uh, and this included Welcome to Wraith, Arcane Rising, uh, Crucible of War Unlimited, all those unlimited, uh, Monarch Unlimited, Tales of Aria, first edition, and Everfest, first edition. That's what, less than six, 55 bucks a box? How do you not buy that? And now they've run out of Arcane Rising and they've added um, History Pack 1 in there in place of Arcane Rising. Now they've jumped up the price a little bit, but it's still the same situation where these are rock bottom prices. And local game stores cannot compete with that. 
And if they're having problems getting product to begin with, where they request cases and cases of product and they get like, I don't know, four boxes to support their massive store, it's just not going to be carried anymore. They're going to drop the product. And when they do get product, if they have to compete with somebody that is selling product at cheaper than the cost that they get it for, they'd have to sell it for a loss to do anything. They're just not going to carry it. And so if they're not carrying the product, what incentive do they have to run uh, tournaments and events for that? They're not going to. And so that's just going to all dry up. Uh, I have one local game store that uh, pretty much dropped all the uh, extra stuff and they run Warhammer now, everything. That's that's their main thing and it's just Warhammer. Uh, they'll do magic side events or, or pre-releases, but really the, they, they're really pushing the Warhammer stuff. And, you know, that's that's going to... I don't have any place to play locally for Flesh and Blood. If I want to play Flesh and Blood, I have to drive south an hour or drive west an hour or drive east two hours. And those are my choices for places that I can go play in the flesh and blood. And honestly, it's quite a hassle to go do that. Um, a local trip here is around 30 minutes if I want to get anywhere in town. Uh, taking time out of my day to add an extra hour of driving wherever I want to go. Um, I'm not going to do that on the regular. Uh, maybe I'll do that for pre-releases, but it's not going to be a regular thing. And they're going to be incentivized less to carry the product. Again, if they can't get the product, if they, uh, they're they not the places that I pre-order from, I pre-order online because that's the only place I can really get it. And when I want to buy, I want to buy at least a case because that is the model that LSS has built around legendaries is that the value you get is from buying a case. And if I can only buy a box or two at my local game store, then that's not going to be where I shop. I have to go to these bigger retailers and the place that has them is Channel Fireball. And Channel Fireball has them at prices that regular game stores cannot compete with and they will not compete with. And so what's going to happen is that they will gradually drop the product and that will put more pressure on the distributors because now you're going to have less and less stores that are going to be asking for it. And where do you think that product's going to go? It's going to go back to the online retailers that can move the product at these rock bottom prices. And so the cards will continue to have no value. Uh, we have some legendaries that, that have been maintained value, and then they just kind of are slowly sinking. Uh, there's not many Majestics that are worth really anything. Like I, I have full collections of everything because everything's so cheap. You can buy singles online all day, and they're, they're all dirt cheap. So that leaves us with these online Discord groups that will have webcam games that will have enough people gathered to fire these events and everything is going to just transition to online that's that's just the way that you're going to play flesh and blood um that's all that's going to be available to you because if my local game store can't get supply and when they do get supply if they can't move the product at all because they can't compete with online stores that are really, really have the rock bottom prices that are below what they can buy for, there's just no reason to carry it. Why carry it at all? And it's a shame because I really, really love this product. I, Like I said, I, I was into Magic for a long time and I pretty much dropped that entirely so I could go play Flesh and Blood. And I do enjoy playing Flesh and Blood, and I do enjoy going to these big events with Flesh and Blood. But my week-to-week -week is only online because that's where the games are. And I think we're going to continue to see this trend, and that's just what's going to be available to us. And I enjoy doing this content, and I like talking about the game. I, I think the game is a wonderful game, uh, but I question... 
how much this game is going to be able to survive if we constantly push this to be just an online game. That's a shame because uh, from what I understand, the name Flesh and Blood is because it's meant to be played in the Flesh and Blood and uh, soon that won't be an option. Well, until next time, I'm Neil and this has been Nearly Sane Games.